Hey guys and welcome to my channel and for this video today I will be painting a seascape and I will be using this centenaire watercolor paper. It is cold press watercolor paper 300 GSM on 140 pounds 18 by 26 centimeters or 7 by 10 and 1 quarter of an inch. Also it is 100% cotton and I do get it from a local store so actually any watercolor paper you have will definitely do. I will start with privetting the paper and I did my sketch earlier on just a regular printing paper, trace it onto my watercolor paper so I don't smudge it if I had to erase some parts of it and the sketch will be as always available for you to download from my website so there is a link down in the description box, you can go ahead check it out and download the sketch for yourself. After privetting the paper I have mixed some ultramarine and dark brown and that's basically all the colors I will be using except for the black and that is the point here not to fuss over colors but just make it as simple as possible. After privetting the paper I painted the sky and very simply I just added a couple of straight strokes and left the left side of the sky a little bit lighter and the right side of the sky a little bit darker. Then moved on to painting the sea and I did do a very very light coat of paint just on the water and then picked up a quite dark quite a lot of amount of uh, color and painted in the waves and as you can see I'm just painting them making the edges a little bit thinner and then the center part the middle part of the wave quite thicker and I do want those waves to be very very dark so you can see I am adding a couple of times a little bit more and more pigment so just make them quite dark and I did mix again my colors so in one part of the wave there is a looking like like it is a little bit more blue and in the other part of the wave like it is a little bit more brown or gray so that it is also fine it doesn't have to be completely the same colors a little bit more details this time I'm painting a little bit smaller waves and more of them just near the, to the boat where the shadows of the boats are afterwards I left it to dry completely and then when it did dry I painted the land that is a little bit further away just above the horizon line and I will be painting three mountains, three rocks or however you want to call it. So the first one that is the furthest away I have painted the lightest again using the same mix of colors and the one on the right side is a little bit darker. I did use black to make it a little bit darker to make it look at it as it, this one is a near to us on that side and ones on the left side are a little bit further away. Then when finished the first one I have dried it with a hair dryer moving to the second one painted it a little bit darker a little bit more pigment again dried it and then moved on to the third one which I have painted the darkest afterwards I've just added a little bit more of the pigment a little bit more of the color very light wash over my waves and over the sea just to remove that white of the paper and to make it slightly slightly bluish grayish and when that dried completely I moved on to painting the boat and the boat for the boat I have used a little bit more of the black in my mix so I have mixed that ultramarine dark brown and black to paint that again right side of the boat that front side of the boat is a little bit darker because it's in shadow and the one that is a little bit further away is a little bit lighter there is also some reflection on the water that it's coming onto the boat so that side is a little bit lighter now painting in the shadows of the boat and as you can see again using the same color that i did use for the boat when painting the shadows uh, around the waves you can see how I'm skipping the part where the wave is and just going around with the shadows just painting them wiggling with my brush I'm not painting them in a straight line but just broken lines wiggly lines but I am doing it between the waves skipping the part where the wave is also making those lines broken that is how it will look that there is some movement of the sea but also the shadows of that boat. When finished with that I'm just adding a little bit more of the details to the boat and painting in some again darker part maybe some writing on the boat some letters and 
numbers, but I'm not going to make them quite visible. You can make yours visible. I'm not going to do that. I do want to make it as a scribbles and then adding some floating. I'm not sure how that is called, but you know what I mean? Those things that the boat can tie itself on and it also shows how deep the water is. And again, adding a little bit more of the pigment on the boat. I will be, I think, adding one more time because I do want that front part to be quite dark, but I'm doing it in layers because when you layer it, um, it does look a little bit nicer and every layer gives something more. So I, I am layering the colors on that boat. Again, adding a little bit more of the pigment onto the waves and just in between the waves. Now I decided to paint a very, very thin lines, that rope that boat is tied with, with a gel pen with actually ink pen and this one is a gel pen, white gel pen. So if you want to do it with brush and paint, that's also fine. You don't have to, you can use here white gouache. You don't have to use white gel pen, but it was easier for me. So uh, at the end, I decided to use ink and some white gel pen. As I said, adding a little bit more of that black, new layer of that black. And I think with that, I'll be finishing off. That's the all, de all the details I do want. And I hope you guys like this video. And if you do, please hit the like button, share it and comment. If you haven't still, please do subscribe to my channel. That would really mean a lot to me. And again, thank you so much for watching. And I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.